Hello everyone and welcome to Operation Heavy Metal. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway here to present the lineup for Year 8 Season 3 of Rainbow Six Siege. To kick off the show, here's Creative Director Alexander Carpazes with an overview of the season. The Rainbow Six Siege team is proud to present Operation Heavy Metal. It's coming with a new Operator Ram coming from South Korea. She's joining the Red Hammer squad because of her destructive capabilities. With the season as well, we're bringing meaningful changes to the balance of the game and the way that you play. The playlists are going through some change as well with the new game mode coming to Arcade. We have a new tutorial system for all the new players jumping in this season as well. All of this plus a commendation system to reward other players. And we have much, much more to share with you. So please enjoy. There comes a moment in every attacker's life when they think, how am I going to deal with that deployable shield and the traps that surely lie behind it? How do I choose which section of the floor to open up? How do I keep the defenders from hearing what I'm up to? Well, the operator with the answer to all of these questions is Ram and her boogie auto breacher. You want to know more? Stick around. While Ram is getting tuned up for a headlining performance later in the show, we've got some opening acts here to reveal new features and updates coming your way. We'll start with the commendation system, a new and rewarding way to recognize your teammates, like the spotter who set up great drone cams, or the text chat champ who stayed cool when you went down 3-0. UX designer Roland Poe will tell you about it. So the goal of the commendation system is to showcase some of the positive aspects we have in our game and allow players a new way to interact with one another and highlight those positivities. At the end of a match, players will have the opportunity to commend two of their teammates in up to three different categories. You can be commended for your dedication, so for being an engaged and reliable teammate, for being on comms, using pings. You can be commended for your guidance, so for showing leadership, for being helpful, and you can be commended for your valor, for being positive, being fun to play with, and just a great Siege community member. Also, you'll have the opportunity to vote to commend the other team as worthy opponents. If you had a fun and fair and fulfilling match against them, this is a great way to spread positivity, not just within your team, but throughout the entire lobby. Players who have been frequently commended in their recent matches will be considered to be on a streak and will have a dedicated icon placed next to their name in places like the player profile panel, the in-match scoreboard, and player cards. And for players who are on a streak, they will also receive an increase to their alpha pack drop roll rate at the end of every match they have whilst the streak is active. But the benefits aren't just for players on a streak. Every single player who is engaged with the commendation system will receive a mid-season alpha pack drop of epic rarity. In addition to that, the top 25% most commended players at the end of the season will receive an alpha pack drop of legendary status. So during Year 8 Season 3, we're also going to be updating the Reputation Center. We're going to have a new page that's all about commendations. You're going to see how many you've received, in which categories, the status of your streak, and the alpha pack drops. Also, we've heard your feedback about the Reputation System, and we know that you're looking for more information about how to achieve the highest Reputation standings. That's why we're also having a dedicated page that's going to show some of the key negative actions and behaviors that can impact your reputation standing. So it's important to note that at the beginning of the season, your commendations will not affect your reputation standing. However, in a future update, after some monitoring, we're going to hook the two systems together, meaning the number of commendations you receive will start to impact your standing. So we're looking forward to getting this into your hands, to seeing how you engage with it, and together, making the Rainbow Six Siege community the best it possibly can be. Now it's time to talk game modes. Operation Heavy Metal is bringing changes to Quick Match and Unranked, plus that brand new arcade mode we mentioned earlier. Game designer Robert Cole and gameplay programmer Albert Val are here to tell you more. As we announced during the year reveal, 
We wanted to make changes to QuickMatch in order to make it faster and more accessible, but we realized that we needed to make some tweaks to other game modes in order to fit those changes. The main objective for the changes that we're doing to QuickMatch is to make it faster, not only by reducing the overall match timers, but also by reducing the waiting time. And additionally, the other main objective is to allow players to focus much more on the action. Now, in order to focus on the action, on the defender side, we're introducing a new system called pre-setups. Now, pre-setups are a pre-deployment of reinforcements and rotation holes at the start of the round. We have designed two variations for each bomb site, which will be chosen randomly at the start of the round, and they will cover the most reinforced walls, but also leaving agency for the players to use the remaining ones as they want. Now, for attackers, we're also introducing a new system called Attackers Protection, which basically consists on a 10 seconds in vulnerability phase at the start of the round, which will allow for a much safer approach to the building. In order to make quick match faster, we will be making changes to all the round timers, from the planning phase to the action phase. We're also taking the chance to make some tweaks to the matchmaking algorithm, which will now find matches much faster. Additionally, since we had to make some changes to some of the maps for the pre-setups, we'll be launching this season with a reduced map pool, which we will be expanding in the future. We know that this new direction for quick match is pushing the playlist into a much more quick and casual place. And that's why we will also be making changes to unranked starting by the name of the playlist. We are changing Anrang's name to Standard to better fit our playlist ecosystem, being a midpoint between our most competitive game modes and our most casual game modes. The main changes that we're doing to Standard is removing map and operator ban phases, so that players can play all the content without restrictions. We're also changing the overtime rounds to 1, to not drag the game for far too long. With these changes, Standard will now become the go-to place for players who want a classic Siege experience, without jumping to rank but also a place for players who want to try out the new operators with the removal of the map and operator ban phases. These changes will bring a much stronger identity to these playlists, and we are confident that players will enjoy them. Last season, we introduced the Permanent Arcade playlist, a place for players to play our previously released arcades, such as Golden Gun, Snipers Only, or even new ones like Free For All. We received an awesome feedback from you throughout the season and we want to keep the playlist fresh and engaging. So, we're introducing a new arcade called Weapon Roulette. Weapon Roulette is a team deathmatch game mode where all players have the same weapon. But, there's a twist. This weapon is gonna be changing to a random new one every short amount of time. So, get ready for chaotic and unexpected gunfights. From Kali snipers to short range shotgun, it's gonna be crazy. As well, it's a place for newcomers to learn about new weapons and attachments. And yes, it's gonna be ready for season release, so have fun with your friends in this new game mode. I'm changing back. Frost, Fuse, Grim. We have news to share on each of these operators, as well as a big update on shotguns. If you've ever run with a shotgun or faced off against one, you're going to want to hear what Associate Game Director Joshua Mills has to say. So shotguns on Siege have not been the most reliable tool for our operators, and that's one of the things we wanted to address. So we're actually kind of overhauling the entire weapon class. There are a couple shotguns that will not be included in this update, but those are the slug shotguns. Focusing on all the rest, there are significant changes coming. If we want to look at a template that really signifies where we're going with this, you can look at Smoke Shotgun. And that is actually the foundation that our amazing weapon expert, Matthew Lacombe, used. So broad changes that you can expect with the shotgun rework are far more precision when you're ADS, far more destruction when you're not, and even more destruction when you're moving and not ADS. And some of you already know this actually works, and I've been doing it with the bailiff for some time. Well, we've actually taken that feature and expanded that across the rest of the shotguns. We don't want anything in the game to ever be a non-option. So at the end of the day, shotguns are gonna be far more consistent and a viable tool for you to bring out on the field. Fuse's charge can chew through and reinforce wall and then start deploying on the opposite side. So we extended that a little further and said, why can't we do that on deployable shields or in some cases, even a Talon shield for Mosa. The goal here is versatility, allowing players to adapt to the environment that's been set up around them. So whether that means deployable shields out and about, or you have Osa on your team helping you, it has extreme destructive capacity, but at the same time, it's a high-risk kind of move. Cluster charge going up! 
So Grim, in part one, we really focused on the efficiency of the launcher. That as well is a little bit of his kit. One of the main contention points of Grim in general is the face check for Intel. You have to point this launcher and put yourself in risk in order to actually take that shot. So the second part of the buff is actually to add an alternate mode to the launcher. This new alternate mode will allow the player to actually bank canisters off the wall or off a surface instead of directly sticking to them. This allows more play and allows you to get them in trickier spots. We want to reward players that have a plan, and just like our other operators with their alternate modes, like Sophia and Capital, Grim will have the same functionality, being able to select what type of canister is going to come out of that launcher the second you shoot it. So the frost change has been a hot topic for us since its reveal. And one of the big things we want to get across here is that the fact that a player can end up helpless in our game has no space there. We do not want that. And that's one of the steps that the frost change is trying to do, where if a player finds themselves on a welcome mat, they have options. Options are, I can pull that off myself with a severe debuff. I'm probably not gonna survive that anyway. But at the same time, I can also have my friend come and help me out. At that point, you will receive no debuff for doing so because they'll safely remove the trap from you. This is exactly how it works in live and also sets up for the scenarios where Frost can get a two for one. So the big thing about a player being able to take the Frost trap off of them, at least on the Lab TS, was that it wasn't severe enough. That people were able to do it too quickly. We're taking it from 2.5 seconds all the way up to four seconds, also including a far more severe debuff. That debuff will last up to 60 seconds and reduce the player all the way down to a walking speed while still leaving that blood trail and making all the vocal calls that we have seen on the lab TS. I'm super, super excited about season three. There's a lot of stuff packed in there. The shotguns alone are a massive package. Beyond that, it's our collaboration that we've already started to establish with the community in a far more tight-knit way. And I really appreciate that and I'm thankful for that and I can't wait for what we're going to be able to do together as we move forward. In Siege? There are a few things you'll need to keep in mind when you're playing your first match. New tutorials focused on the core mechanics are coming this season. Let's get the details from game designer Victoria Vera. As we mentioned in the year 8 reveal, uh, we will have not only new playable tutorials, but a fully fledged new first time user experience that aims to make newcomers feel more guided through their journey through Siege. You have to go around to continue your training. We will have three new tutorials basics, attack, and defense that aim to make the newcomer feel more confident while playing their first Siege match. The first tutorial will be basics. In basics, we will be covering what makes Siege truly Siege. We will make a special emphasis on core mechanics such as leaning, verticality, secondary gadgets, unique abilities, and so on. The other two tutorials will be covering the asymmetrical nature of Siege, so it will be attack and defense. So the attack tutorial will cover how to win around as an attacker. We will be covering the mechanics needed for doing so, which include how to drone, how to enter the building by grappling, how to destroy defender gadgets and cameras, how to use tactical advantages such as breaching, diffusing, and finally eliminating all opponents. So the defense tutorial will be serving the same purpose as the attack one, but this time as a defender. Um, we will be covering mechanics such as reinforcing, barricading, how to prepare a good setup, and other mechanics that are needed to understand how to play as a defender, such as electricity. So after you complete the tutorials, we will be rewarding 10 new ops, 5 on attack and 5 on defense. We do have plans for the future. We are preparing the new AI Defender playlist, in which newcomers and their friends can play siege matches in a more safe and controlled environment before starting their journey in the PvP space. When we talk about player comfort, we're not talking about your gaming chair. We're talking about all the little things that make playing and watching Siege that much better. In this season, we're giving you the option to remove the HUD while using FreeCam. And that's not all. Creative Director Alexander Karpazes is back to tell you more. Last season, we introduced FreeCam in the match replay. And this season, we're bringing an update. We're allowing you to remove the HUD from the replay cam so that you can capture the perfect moment and use that in any of the content that you're making. So this feature is also coming to the spectator mode. Free cam plus hide UI will be one package for all spectators out there. 
For us, we're really excited to share these tools with the esports scene. This will change the way that people will be able to watch the matches play out in real time. And we can't wait for you to have a new perspective on those pro matches. With the latest update coming to FreeCam, that means there's going to be a new way for all of you content creators to capture what you want, the way you want it, and share it with the world. Another quality of life update that's coming that's very near and dear to my heart. We've all had that one squad mate who went to grab a sandwich an hour ago and you want to kick him from the match. Now you can. You can kick and promote in your squad now. So starting with Season 3, Operation Heavy Metal, you'll also be able to read patch notes in the game. So if you ever want to refer to them, you don't have to go anywhere else but in-game to check them out. Our patch notes are the place to go to whenever you want to find out the real details that are changing each season and each patch that comes within the season itself. So now you have a permanent home to reference whenever you want to see what's up. Changes are coming to Operation Heavy Metal Battle Pass to make it easier for you to target the rewards you want. Here to explain this update is Business Strategy Director Mohamed Ben Hanada. Late last year, we released the new Battle Pass system. We've received a lot of good feedback from you, the community. The two major points we want to work on for the next coming seasons is the discoverability and the navigations. So for the discoverability, we're introducing the Entry tab. The Entry tab will give you an overview of the main rewards to unlock during the seasons. So this is going to come up in year eight, season three. And as I said, during the upcoming seasons, you'll see more and more improvements on the discoverability and navigations. So stay tuned for that. Now, the time has come for destruction. The time has come for chaos. The time has come for RAM. First up, we'll have concept artist Sunshine Kim sharing insights on the design and creative vision for this operator. Then we'll go to director of gameplay design Jeremy Carvin and game designer Justin Laranger Alualia for details on RAM's gadgets and how she'll be wreaking havoc in the field. RAM's unit, an all-female unit uh, of the South Korean Special Forces, is really competitive to get in. As we research and learn more about this unit, Tarantula slash Taeho unit, we all agreed that this character should look absolutely badass. RAM's gadget is rather mechanical than high-tech, so it was natural choice for us to make the design more greedy, more grounded, which I know that a lot of our fans have been asking for. Her night visions, camouflage, combat shirt and pants, these are all uh, general aesthetics that we borrowed from South Korean military. And then we went through redesigning process on top of that to give a more uniqueness, to make this character really memorable um, and stand out. So Ram is part of Red Hammer. So the capacity of destruction of this device needed to be unlimited. With this operator, we are introducing the biggest throwable ever made in Siege. The buggy needed to be very heavy and tanky. We have two rotating shredders on the bottom to destroy floors and rotating saws in the front to smash walls. Finally, to increase the sentiment of chaos, we decided to power this device with a combustion engine. Boogie deployed. Boogie to go! RAM's gadget is the Boogie Auto Breacher. These are massive bulletproof tools of soft destruction. RAM can throw these boogies uh, from pretty much anywhere, so behind cover, she can also do this while repelling. And as a matter of fact, if she were to throw one of these through a barricade, it'll smash right through, though a castle armor panel will withstand the impact. Once a boogie has been deployed, RAM can activate it from anywhere on the map. Uh, she does this remotely, just like you would with Thermite or Fuse. At any point before activating her gadget, Ram can use the alternate mode to switch her trajectory. She can choose between having it move directly forward or curving it to the left or to the right. These alternate modes can be very useful to deal with situations, say, around a corner without having to expose yourself. A great example of this is Blue Elbow in Oregon Basement. So Ram's kit is really designed to allow players to emphasize on either her aggression or destruction aspects. 
Ram's first primary option is the R4C, which you may recognize as Ash's signature assault rifle. This weapon is great for aggressive pushes onto site and those quick engagements. And to help Ram with the longer range aspects of some of her engagements, we're giving her a few extra high-powered scopes. For players who prefer more of a suppressive fire approach, Ram also has access to the LMGE. This weapon's massive magazine and fairly good recoil make it an excellent choice for players who just want to hail bullets and sustain pressure on the enemy. So Ram's first secondary option is the Mark 19 9mm. For more aggression players, this is going to be very useful in a gunfight in case you ever run out of bullets in your primary. Ram's alternate secondary is the ITA-12S shotgun. This is a great choice for players who really want to double down on that destruction aspect of Ram. So Ram is a three health, one speed operator. She is an unstoppable force. She's there to take position and hold constant pressure on the enemy. And that extra health is going to make sure that whatever the defenders throw at her, she's not going away anytime soon. So Ram's secondary gadget options really once again allow players to focus on either aggression or destruction. Her first option is flash grenades, which are fantastic in a gunfight to really push down on those defenders. Alternatively, Ram has access to hard breach charges. At her simplest, Ram is a fantastic vertical operator. Unlike operators like Buck or Sledge, she can do her destruction from relative safety. We're hoping that players who are perhaps a bit wary of doing vertical play will really take to this and experience this absolutely core element of Siege's gameplay. Rem is also great at destroying a lot of gadgets that you would typically find in those narrow corridors and choke points, making it a very easy push for the attackers. More experienced players may notice that that remote activation, alternate mode, and also the sheer sound that this gadget produces are all tools at their disposal to come up with much trickier strategies. Ram's Destructive Chaos is a really good smokescreen for operators who have gadgets that have very loud sound cues that defenders will typically want to pay attention to. Examples of this are Fuse, Amaru, and just about any hard breach operator. Imagine trying to bandit trick a wall when the ceiling is being torn out from above you. Operators like Flores, Brava, and Twitch all really want to get their drones on site to deal with enemy utility and the boogies can absolutely help them do that. The easiest way to counter Ram is simply to outposition her, and she's not exactly a quiet operator. Some operators, especially stealthy ones like Cavera or Vigil, can really take advantage of that. Even though Ram's boogies are bulletproof, they're not indestructible. Explosives such as C4 or impact grenades will destroy boogies immediately. Boogies also have a large red canister on the rear that just like on Mira or Osa, can be shot to destroy it. Though Ram's gadget is mechanical once it's activated, before it's been activated, it's electronic, meaning it can be jammed by a well-placed mute jammer or also detected by Solace. The absolute chaos and destruction that Ram brings to the battlefield is so much fun. We've had a blast testing her out, and we're hoping that players have that same experience. You can play the season test server for Operation Heavy Metal starting next week. Put Ram's gadgets through its paces and start working on your counter strategies. And remember, whether you're on the test server or in the live game, reporting issues you encounter to R6Fix will give you a chance to earn some neat rewards. Now, before we wrap up, there's one more thing. And yes, it's a new elite. Please welcome to the Elite Club for the first time, Thunderbird. <laughs>